In this video traders we've got a 15 minute strategy involving MACD divergence and pivot points on the major forex pairs. Hey traders a very warm welcome to you. So divergence can be a very powerful tool however I've always thought that you're kind of missing a trick if you're just using divergence so this strategy combines divergence with pivot points let's talk about what I've got in front of my screen how we set it up and some of the rules to the trade so I've got euro RJP1 on the screen at the moment you can use it on any major forex pair or any kind of thick decent liquid forex pair none of these exotic stuff so I think you've got to stay with the big guys Pivot points, um, pivot points are going to be on your platform, whatever platform you're trading. They are basically very, very simple formulas based on the prior day's open, light, high, low, close values. I won't go into too much depth on how they're calculated, but go and check out a video I have done on pivot points um, before if you want to kind of dig down into it. Anyway, the idea is that price moves to these R1, S2, 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 sorry, S1, S2 levels, and then bounces off them or floats through them. And obviously, I mean, that's pretty obvious, right? But what we want to know as traders, is this going to bounce or is it going to drive straight through? So what we do is we add MACD in and we look for a divergence with MACD combined with the tag of our pivot point, our S1, S2, R1, R2 level and take a fade trade. Let's have a look at some examples. So first of all, settings. 15 minute chart, I've got pivots up here, I've got pivot point showing, S1, S2 showing, R1, R2 showing, I've just suppressed R3, R4, R5 and S3, S4, S5, because I don't think you need it for this. Um, and when you start getting to those levels, you probably want to be careful because the game's changed a little bit. MACD settings, standard MACD guys, I have on it uh, the fast length of 12, the slow of 26, uh, running off the close, a signal smoothing of nine so really tw uh, tw uh, 12 26 9 will be settings on whichever platform you've got now just very quickly divergence won't go into too much detail about it but you guys probably know the score if you don't again i've done a video on divergence and if you're a subscriber may you maybe you've seen that before and a warm welcome to you subscribers out there uh you know divergence is a low in price uh, and a low in the indicator so imagine this is the indicator and now we get a new low in price Okay, but we don't get a new low in the indicator. Um, and, and this could be an RSI, could be a CCI, could be MACD, um, whatever it may be. That's the kind of thing we're looking for. So I've got Euro GP, JPY in front of you here. Market opens, market drives to lows, MACD drives to lows, pretty standard stuff. Don't quite hit that S1, pull back up, drive again. This time we go to a new low in price and we tag S1. So we want to know at S1, uh, is this thing, thing going to hold? Is it going to bounce? Is it going to drive straight through? We never know, do we, right? But the idea is that with this, we can say to ourselves, okay, there's S1. And if I'm looking at my MACD, I see MACD here. We've actually got a slight divergence there. In other words, it hasn't gone to a new low compared to the low it was at at whatever time it was, 2.30 in the morning uh, when, the, when the Asian markets are, are, are open. So we would look to go long there now for risk management perspective um this is something i think is going to depend on what you're trying to achieve in other words if you are looking to get long your jpy for example on a daily time frame you've seen a daily signal you could use this as a method to intraday adjust your entry to get a real sweet spot like the low end of the range of the day or even the low of the day in this example here and but you're using a, a daily as a kind of thesis so you think hey i think we're going to kind of uptrend on a daily for the next five six seven eight days or eight months even but i want to get in now in the next few in the next few weeks at some point you could even then look at this kind of strategy to find you an intraday point that's low now is that going to be the low for the next week you don't know but if you're trading a daily that might work for you or you just literally use a day trading strategy and say hey i assume this is going to be the low or near to the low of the day and i'm going to trade for a mean reversion back to whatever that is that could be the midpoint of the day it could be the high of the day it could be the close you could kind of trail it and look for you know four green bars up to you guys you know i can sit here and say that you should do this and do that but you you know the score with risk reward ratios i would always recommend having a stop maybe one atr on your 50 minute chart under your entry 
just for safety purposes that seems a good place to start adjust it to suit what you're looking for if you're looking for more target maybe make it two times a 15 minute atr if you're looking for a little scalp one's fine look for a two to one three to one look for a, you know, a little burst off that low and take it let's look at another example before we um before we call it a day another one here guys we've got a pound yen happens to be a couple of yen ones uh we've got a push down to s1 now we've touched s1 here and we don't have any divergence because we've done it quite early on so you, you're not going to be interested in that we push down to uh s s2 here and now we do get some divergence because the difference between this low and this low you know we it, it, we've got a not not a new low so we do have divergence we've got a new low in price not a new low in the indicator so we'd look to take that trade long as we tagged s2 and like i say you could use a 15 minute atr whatever the atr is let's have a look shall we we might as well stick it up uh, into the indicator average true range we leave it on a 14 period setting i always like to stick it on to a histogram uh, those subscribers of you know uh, that's what i like to do and what are we looking at here we're looking at about 14 pip stops so it's not a lot uh yeah 14 13 14 pips it's not a lot so if you go 13 14 pips under that low it's reasonable right your risk reward ratio is pretty good and you're probably going to want to take it out i mean you're definitely going to want to take it out if you hold it all the way to the highs maybe you want to take it out s1 that's a good starting place for your scale it's giving you a good risk reward ratio as well on that scale um if you were a bit aggressive and tightened up you might have got pinged out on that pullback but if you didn't you know you've got plenty of meat on the bone i mean the, the point is guys this gives you an opportunity to maybe look and get involved in those lows get involved in those highs by looking for a reason to and the reason is that it's s1 s2 p uh, sorry r1 or r2 or p dependent pivot point depending if you come from a low or a high point and the divergence so it gives you that confluence and maybe a bit more reason to pull the trigger on the trade all right guys that's your 15 minute major fx pairs that's your confluence on your macd and your pivot points let me know how you get on with that good trade to keep the risk managed see you next one take care bye bye